bring back up my slides. Okay, so there's my first slide. Let's move on and uh, let me know as uh, we're going forward if you're having trouble at all. Um, please let me know, okay? So the very next step is as we are going to do in each class, and these are great practices, just a quick pause as we think about um, introducing kind of the tension in the body. So just for a minute, we're going to pause and so just turn your attention inward and notice how your body feels. Just take a, a moment to kind of scan through, notice maybe the different parts of the body, feel your body in, this, in whatever position you're in. If you're sitting, just kind of notice, well, there's a little tweak there, there's a little ache there, there's a little, maybe a little comfort there, maybe you're in a comfortable chair or whatever, just notice the state of your body sitting right now. And then no, no, that is you're aware not. of your breathing. <laughs> notice the flow of your breath, kind of like we did last week. Just feel the breath going in and out of the body. You don't have to do anything special with it, but just feel the breath. Know when you're breathing in. Know when you're breathing out. And then just kind of putting them together, feel the body, feel the body breathing, feel the whole body sitting. Kind of feel the breath through the whole body as best you can. There's going to be mental activity. That's fine. Whenever mental activity shows up on your screen, in a sense, you just acknowledge that. Talk about thinking in a few. Just coming back, the body is our focus. And then that's it. That's our quick pause to start off. And these pauses are, I think, do two things. One just helps us reconnect with the present moment. So if you find yourself kind of like ruminating or thinking a lot, there's a lot going on up here. Uh, the body is a great anchor to get out of the head and into the body. And it, it could just be a great little break. And research tells us that even short little breaks of a minute or two to to do just that, to relax the body a little bit, you can consciously relax things. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that next week. We're going to go in into stress quite a bit next week. Um, but so that's just a great way to kind of reconnect, refocus, recenter yourself. All right. So Quick quote here, if you think of your body as a house, the body scan is a way to throw open all the windows and let the fresh air of awareness sweep it clean. So it's actually from an article that I'll send with today's lesson later on from by John Kabat-Zinn. All right, so um, let's process a little bit, talk a little bit about what your first week was like. Um, curious to hear, as I said, what your experience was like. First, let's start with were you able to fit it in? And as I put in the email um, that I sent out, if you got a chance to read it yesterday, you know, I'm sure there was uh, some of you who did pretty good and had a good experience, maybe even did the formal practices every day and the informal practices. And I'm sure of you, there are some of you who, who kind of had a, you know, so, so experience, did some of it, found it hard, got carried away. And then some probably, this always happens uh, very common, you know, just the week, you know, you get swept away with all the doings of the week and it's very hard to do much at all. That's part of what we're really looking at is how do you fit it in? So what was your experience? Let me know how you did in fitting it in, finding time, finding a place um, and beginning to develop a little bit of that, that routine in that practice. So you can put a word or two in the chat and it doesn't need to be long um 
you know, sentence or less, even just, you know, what was your experience like? All right, great. Thank you. I see a need to focus more on informal practice. All right, good. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that. And that is, I think, really a good counterbalance to our formal practice. Um, lots of times people say they need to focus more on their formal practice. So uh, if you're getting the formal practice time in, that's good. Did terrible. Think I need to set a dedicated time. Yeah. I mean, that's, see, like I said in that email, don't give you it, like you, anything. You know, even the word eat. terrible sort of implies that you did something wrong. Okay. You didn't. Uh, you're learning how to best uh, do this and how to find the time. Okay. So uh, don't, don't think you did terrible. Um, another ditto for, on that though. It is hard. And that's the whole point of this is to begin to see that heart there. That's great. Give yourself a heart, give yourself a pat on the back for doing what you could and, and for learning how to do this. Okay. Working on carving out the time. So it's, it's a, pro, it's a work in progress. I faced a lot of resistance trying to habit stack help. Good. That's a really good, important connection there. Able to work it in periodically with my workouts. See, that's great. So I do it with stretching. I even do it with bike riding sometimes. We'll talk about walking today and other movement. Uh, need to set a dedicated time. So yeah, try to really set that time. You might even put some time in your calendar or link it with something that you do on a routine basis in the morning or later in the day. Um, found myself stepping away from my desk more. Great. I think that's a good thing. We're going to talk in week five. I think it is about mindfulness at work. Did some informal practice, set a scheduled time in my calendar, used my kids' bedtime. Great. Perfect. Difficult this past week. Yeah, sometimes it's just going to be really hard. And that's why the practice that we do really helps us with those most difficult weeks. Because the more we practice, the more we have this sort of routine ingrained in, in, our, um, in our daily lives. And you'll find even brief ways to do it. Best time might be in the car. Good. So I've heard people do it in the car as they park. I've heard people do it in the bathroom to get a little privacy or, or staying in the car before you come back into the house when you get home. So, you know, these are good suggestions. Yeah, there is some background noise. Let me mute everybody. All righty, that should help. <clears throat> Not great. Good. I did it when I felt anxiety. So that's a good way to think about it. And we'll talk again in next week's class about dealing with stress and anxiety is closely linked with that. So you're feeling a little bit of anxiety or stress. That's a good cue to say, okay, I need to calm down. I need to feel it in the body a bit, but I need also to, to calm and relax myself. <clears throat> Got everybody muted. So hopefully that helps. Hey, I like this one. Arrived at 10 minutes, I worked 10 minutes earlier and sat in my car to pause before clocking in. That's really nice. Now you might hear my dog in the background. I apologize for that. You know, we have to we have to deal with internal noise and external noise. And there's sometimes, you know, never the perfect circumstances. Sometimes there's in my office back at work, I was right across from the ambulance area. Sirens were going off all the time. And that became part of the, I had to kind of accept that and notice that. We'll talk about dealing with sounds uh, as well. So, you know, that's part of what we have to do. These are great, folks. Thanks very much for putting these in. Um, a lot of emotional stress, made time when I could. Good. So give yourself kudos for that because if you're making some time dealing with a lot of stress a lot going on that's that's a good good start woke up super early before household woke up good one morning very peaceful yeah it's nice when you find those moments those peaceful moments really tap into those well a few times well a few times is fine twice that's good better than none 
join Pilates. Good. That's a great, you know, you can do, do it. You know, if anybody does yoga, we'll talk a little bit about gentle yoga and there's some videos. Yeah. Fi finding time that is uninterrupted is hard. I realize that. Um, and so do the best you can, but sometimes you just have to deal with the interruptions and then go back to it. Maybe if you can try to use it to get to sleep. So great. Um, perfect time to try it. A lot of people report that it does help calm down the thinking mind. We'll be talking more. Today's lesson will help with that tomorrow or next week's lesson will also help with that. Yeah, a lot of people do this with walking the dog. So if you're out walking the dog or on a walk in nature, we'll talk also about a walking meditation, but that's a perfect time. All right, so here's a question. Can I define formal and informal? So the, the difference essentially is a formal meditation is when you're sitting or standing, but you're, you're setting aside a close to 10 minutes and you're closing the eyes or you know really turning inward and you're taking that time. So last week we did the sitting meditation. This week we'll do a body scan. Those are formal meditations. Informal practice is focusing on routine activities. Uh, and I'll be giving you more as we go along. Like, for example, brushing your teeth, washing your hands, doing the laundry, doing the dishes, um, making a cup of coffee at work. Those moments when you're doing those things, usually the mind is off somewhere else. So an informal practice is simply focusing in on what you're doing while you're doing it and the sensations of that, the, the movements of the body, the smell of, say, making the coffee, the sound of it, just really bringing your attention to that, okay? That's formal and informal. Intentionally at home once, good. At work once, no more. Well, that's good. You're trying different places, so that's great. You muted everybody. You're still, you're still getting feedback? Hopefully not. Everybody should be muted. Driving was good, but I work remotely now, so that option is not there. Yeah, okay. okay. What kind of talk do I have? Small yapper. Um, he's a rescue mutt, park chihuahua. Sitting in the car in the garage. Yeah, that is a good idea. I like that idea. I know I'm alone with my thoughts and my breathing. Twice a day I go for a walk. Good. All right, these are great. Favorite time is when I walk my dog, yep, connect with nature. Yep, we'll be talking more about that. So um, is my audio coming through? Hopefully it's coming through okay. Um, these are great. So now let's turn to quickly, what did you notice when you did it? And you got had the log sheet. So when you got to sit and focus a bit on your uh, sitting, breathing meditation, what was that experience like? Was it calming, peaceful, quiet? Was it challenging? Sometimes people find it challenging to because there's a lot of thoughts going around. Um, what was it like for you? Everybody's kind of different and unique. So maybe give me a word about that. I see some coming in. Calming, good. Distracted easily. You know, this is really what we're doing is we're training our attention because I think never before in history have we had so many distractions. And the phone itself, I mean, I've been doing some reading lately about how you know, we can detox ourselves from our phones, which can be really, really helpful. Even just taking some time to disconnect from all the digital distractions that we have. The concept of stop judging, need to be reminded to bring it back. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, and that's a big part of the practice. So, you know, we're always judging things and you can't completely eliminate it. But what we're doing with all that is we're learning to be aware of the typical things that we judge and that we have opinions and we have likes and dislikes about. And you'll we'll also do some of that today. Relaxing, calming, good. Challenging not to think of the new task. Yeah. So you'll notice the pull of the mind to want to think about 
What are you going to do next? What are you going to have for dinner? What are the things that you've got to do for work? Okay, so just notice those. It's, they're going to come up. They're going to surface. Notice them. You might even label them. You could say, oh, to-do list. Oh, shopping list. Oh, dinner, whatever it is. Label it and let it go. Come back to your anchor. That's why the anchor is important. Last week, the anchor was our breath. Thinking of all I had to do. Another same thing, okay? Again, that's not bad, okay? It's not, don't give yourself, I'm going to talk about this. Don't give yourself a hard time about that. Just notice it. Remember, this is might be very new for a lot of you. Have a mindful buddy at home. Wonderful. We did it together. That's really, I hope some of you others have been able to find mindful buddies. Challenging. Yeah, it is challenging. It's hard to find the time. It's hard to sit and do nothing, right? You're just doing nothing. It seems like, what the heck am I doing this for? But, um, you know, hopefully you'll learn through the course that there are a lot of reasons to do this. And, and I, hopefully you'll really experience some of those. A little easier, guided versus unguided. Yeah, mostly we it's easier guided. Had to refocus often. Yep, that's part of the practice. I need more practice, don't we all? It felt ineffective. Well, so this brings up this idea of, you know, what is the goal of this? I did ask you to think about why did you sign up for this? What are some of your hopes about what you want to gain from the class? Um, but sometimes we just have to really put aside what it, we're not striving. Okay. We're really just trying to, to do the practice, just let it be as it is in the moment. Just try to follow that as you go. Okay. Try to let go of any expectations of what you should be getting out of this and just see where it takes you. Now, that's kind of hard, but that's part of what we're doing. All right, again, thank you for those. Um, so that's just the first week. We've got five more weeks to go. And then what I really hope that you'll do is begin really developing this practice for yourself. We are gonna have a booster class or sort of refresher class. Um, but you know, that's the, the that's the point. You know, we're not we're not doing this even I don't I've been doing this for 10 years probably at this point, and I teach it. Um you know, it ebbs and flows. I don't do it perfectly. There's no, there is no perfect. But I've established a good practice, both formal and informal, that, you know, works for me. And that's, that's the other key. Find something that works for you. All right. So we're going to be developing patience, curiosity, being kind to yourself. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and thank you for letting me know that you have to jump off. If you do have to jump off, I get it. You know, as I said before, if you have to eat, go ahead and eat. If you got to take care of something urgent, you got to do that. That's why we record this. So make sure we are recording. Yes, we are. Okay. Great. So mini quick lesson, uh, bringing the mind and the body together. We know that they're linked, but this is all about making that link stronger in a way. And connecting the dots between what's going on in the mind and our emotional state and body sensations. And the body scan really is a great way to do that. A couple more definitions quickly. Uh, mindfulness means maintaining a moment by moment awareness of our thoughts, feelings, and body sensations and surrounding environment. Mindfulness also involves acceptance. So that's a big part of what we're looking at today, meaning we pay attention to thoughts and feelings without judging them, without believing that there's a right or wrong way to think. So we're trying to let go of those opinions. When we practice mindfulness, our thoughts tune into what we're sensing in the present moment rather than rehashing the past or imagining the future. I showed this the last time, but I just figured I'd show it again because the body scan um, is about getting out of the mind, especially when our mind is cluttered by thoughts and it is full and, and you know we're ruminating. So it's about getting out of the head and into the body. And um, let, me, let me see where I'm at with this. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so just kind of wanted to kind of reinforce that point. So in this week, the body is our anchor. Um, now you can have either, and as you go forward, you can sort of pick and choose. Is, is the breath going to be your anchor? Is the body going to be your anchor? Sometimes you can even have a sense of um, different sensations being your anchor. All right. So I sent this article. I don't know if you had a chance to read it, but five tips for establishing a meditation practice. I think it says really succinctly what is helpful. So quickly practice most days. So it's more about frequency, especially in the beginning, even if it's just two or three minutes, less willpower. So in other words, don't try to like force yourself. If you're having to force yourself, probably not going to work. Um, although <laughs> This is the kind of the funny balance. Um, you do have to set that goal. You do have to make that place. A lot of talked about making a dedicated place and time. So that's that will help. Habit stacking. So linking it with other things that you do. I've always found very helpful. A lot of, a lot of you talked about, you know, doing it first thing in the morning or in your car, like, you know, connecting with your commute or sometimes people do it when they get home or when you're um, making a cup of coffee, something like that. Keep that curious attitude, okay? So that's really important. Keep that attitude of openness. Um, we'll be talking about that more. Be comfortable. Don't overthink it. You know, it. and be kind to yourself. The kindness part is so, so important. Um, this next quote kind of says it. An attitude of friendliness toward yourself is a key predictor of whether mindfulness will be rewarding or a struggle. To get an idea of how mindfulness will work for you, reflect on how you generally treat yourself when you're anxious or stressed. This opens the door to how you can nurture your attitude of friendliness. So, you know, we all have that little inner critic. But with this, remember, it's not about doing it perfectly. It's it's not about doing it the right way. Just do it. And and when you feel like you're not doing it right or you feel like your mind is all over the place, that's really okay. Remember to be kind to yourself. Remember not if you if you do find yourself criticizing yourself, notice that. That's part of the mindfulness practice. Just be aware of that. And that's that's a clue to some of the things that we do to ourselves. We're going to be talking in week, maybe it's the last week, um, on self-compassion. Real important stuff. So try to keep that attitude of kindliness or friendliness toward yourself as we do this. Other attitudes that are important, and this is another, you know, that same link. Beginner's mind when we do the body scan. So in other words, as we scan through the body and notice different parts of the body, just kind of notice them as if being aware of them for the first time. You know, it sounds funny, but I mean, like, think about your big toe. You know, it's your toes are kind of a strange little things there that really help a lot. But think about it as if for the first time. Bring patience to the exercise. Now, sometimes this can be kind of boring. You might get a little restless. That's when thoughts start to pop up. This is about cultivating our patience, and I think you'll find that it does do that, and accepting things as they are. So part of what we do in the body scan is you might notice, well, I really, there's that pain again in my lower back. Literally, for me, I've got that pain in my lower back. Um, instead of you know, trying to get away from that or, or ignoring it, or this is about accepting it as it is. Um, we'll notice stories that attach to those things. Um, and it's, we're just trying to meet things as they are, not about the narrative that's going on. The other piece with that is also um, the um, acceptance of the way we feel about ourselves. We all have opinions. I'm going to read this quick little uh, paragraph about, uh, which I think kind of says it all before we start the body scan. 
So just listen to this and just see how it feels for you. I am the pain in your head and not in your stomach, the unspoken grief in your smile. I am your high blood pressure. I am your hot flashes, your fragile low back, your agitation and fatigue. You tend to disown me, suppress me, ignore me, coddle me, condemn me. You usually want me to go away immediately to disappear. I'm only the recent notes of a long symphony, the most evident branches of roots that have been challenged for seasons. So I implore you, I am a messenger with good news, as disturbing as I can be at times. I am your friend, not your enemy. I have no desire to bring pain and suffering. I'm simply tugging at your sleeve. Um, you are a being so vast, so complex, with amazing capacities for self-regulation and healing. Let me be one of the harbingers that leads you to the mysterious core of your being. I may ask you uh, to alter your diet, to get more sleep, to exercise more, to breathe more consciously. So that's that's the end of it, basically. I kind of summed it up a bit. Um, but that's kind of what we need to pay more attention to all of those things that, and we do have, been, we've been conditioned to in some ways not deal with them, to shove them off to the side, to suppress them. So we're, we're trying not to do that. We're trying to be more aware of what's going on and to, to be more accepting. So here's the body scan. The body scan can be done. I'm going to, I think we'll do this. Um, well, probably less than 10 minutes. So we're getting not tight on time. But um, so anyway, the body scan can be done sitting. If you're sitting, that's fine. It can be done lying down. It can be done standing. It can be done. That is a powerful quote. It can be done uh, quickly in a couple of minutes. It can be done standing in line at the grocery store. It can be done laying down when you're getting ready to go to sleep. So. Try to use it in different places and times. The first thing that we're going to do um, is make our sure our bodies are in a good position. So just kind of um, we always have kind of habitual choice in our sitting. So maybe just find a stretch a little bit, move a little bit, find a position and just adjust yourself so that you feel as comfortable as you can be. You might stretch out your legs a little bit, maybe stretching your back. Whatever it is, maybe shoulders, taking a nice, slow, deep breath in and out, maybe rolling the shoulders, maybe stretching the neck, a little couple of head rolls, maybe doing some, maybe stretching out the hands and the arms, opening and closing the hands, rolling the wrists. Okay. So a few gentle stretches can all be part of our mindfulness practice open and closing the jaw moving it around gently smiling to yourself give yourself a smile for being here for doing this and then taking a sleep a slow gentle deep breath or two and if you like you can close your eyes or you can keep them open. This is either way, whatever you're most comfortable with, closing them or keeping them slightly open with an unfocused gaze down in front of you. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by feeling that sense of being settled, you know, coming into stillness, being supported, letting ourselves relax, maybe even giving yourself permission to relax. And just notice the sensation of your body as you do that. Remember to breathe. So take maybe a couple of deep breaths.
And then let your breath be natural. And as we do this, as we scan through the body, use this sense of kindness. Bring, bring it to each part of the body. So let's start at the top of the body, the top of the head, and notice any sensations, the top of the head or the sides of the head, the back of the head, sensations around the head and scalp. And then the forehead, letting go of worries. You can let things relax as we go through. If you find some tension, feel free to let the, let the brow and the forehead relax around the eyes, around the ears. You might notice sounds around you. Let them be as you feel the ears. Shifting attention now to the mouth. The lips. Again, if you feel like you'd like to smile a little bit, smile to yourself. Just a slight half smile of, can bring that sense of kindness to the practice. And notice, you know, we can be quiet. You can let the mouth and the tongue all relax. You don't have to say anything. Breathe into the throat and the neck. Now gently release any tension from the shoulders and feel the shoulders from the inside out. Feel down through the arms, the upper arms, elbows, lower arms, your hands. Explore the hands a little bit. Maybe you notice sensations in the palms or the fingers or the thumbs. Kind of a sense of aliveness, tingling. Let's take a deep breath and feel your chest and lungs, and heart area. And as you breathe out, notice there's a sensation of relaxation. As you breathe in, a sensation of expansion. Feel the length of the spine and the back, all the way down to your lower back and pelvis sit bones, feel the groundedness of your sit bones and your hips, pelvic area. Feel the lower belly, the whole soft area, the front of the body, just noticing, being aware of any sensations. Let your awareness flow down into your legs. So being aware of the upper legs, the thighs, the knees. Down into the lower legs, the calves and the shins the ankles, and your feet. And notice any sensations, explore this a little bit. Contact your feet, make with the ground. Any sensations around your toes or the bottom of your feet or the tops of your feet. Now expand your awareness so that you feel the whole body at once, 
the whole body sitting here. Feel the whole body as a field of sensations. Feel the body breathing within this field of sensations. Letting the earth support you. And notice how you feel right now. Perhaps appreciating if you have a quieter mind and a more relaxed body. But whatever you're feeling is fine. Just take a little bit of time to just rest with whatever you're experiencing. This practice is helping you be more present through feeling your body. Remind yourself throughout your day to bring this practice into your life. Remembering that you are not just your thoughts. That your body is always in the present. That you can always return to this body awareness. And as you do this, you may find that you have more clarity and ease. Which benefits not only you, but others as well. Now feel free to slowly, as we rise from the meditation, to slowly begin to open your eyes. They were closed. And bring your attention to wherever you are. And thank yourself for your practice. So notice what that was like as we did that. Notice what it feels like now. Again, no right or wrong. What was your experience? Just be aware of that. If you want to share, if you want to, if anybody wants to put in the chat, feel free to do that. The whole point is to just notice what that was like for you. Well, these are nice, calm and fuzzy. <laughs> Centered and energized, relaxing, very light, good. Almost as if I'm floating, chance to slow down the speedy mind. Yep, relaxing, good. So let's move on. We're getting, um, we've got about five minutes left. May run over a little bit today. If you have to go, I understand. But I do want to talk a little bit about mindful movement. It's really important uh, to, like we did in the beginning, to incorporate maybe some stretching or gentle yoga. Um, as we look at these cute cats, you know, as we come out of being still, you might stretch a little bit. So maybe doing a couple stretches. When you stretch, of course, be very careful about your stretching. Don't, don't do something that's going to um, hurt yourself. So if you have pain or discomfort somewhere. Um, so do a couple of slow, gentle stretches and notice what that stretch feels like. Even if it's just focusing in on one part of the body, you know, so often we're kind of hunched over our keyboards or whatever it is that you know, those positions that we get into. Take a few moments to mindfully stretch, feel the stretch, feel the breathing as you do that, slow your breathing down. Those are just some tips as you're doing that. I'll give you some links, too, to kind of try out because they'll be part of the practice. Here are just some other exercises, just sort of ways that you can. Somebody mentioned um, different ways that they already do, like going for a walk or um, moving. I, I do this sometimes on a bike. Um, so you can do it going up and down stairs, um, skip to music. Do some power cleaning, do some movement while you're watching TV. So just get creative a little bit. Okay, so do, do what you um, can and just bring that mindful awareness to that activity. Now, walking meditation is an excellent uh, way to do this. There's, there's a link to a walking meditation. So I highly recommend you try this because it can be a great counterbalance to um, a formal sitting meditation or a body scan. So 
you could really mix it up this week. Uh, but a walking meditation, what it comes down to is feeling the sensations using your, your senses, even your inner sense. <clears throat> so feeling your sensations as you lift and place your feet, that sense of contact, feeling the movement of the legs, the hips, the, you know, the, maybe the swing of the arms, feeling the different, what it feels like to move through space. Maybe if you're walking outside, you know, what the sun on your face feels like or the breeze on your skin. Um, a classic walking meditation involves slowing down to even like half speed or less. And you can even do it indoors, you know, just taking 10, five to 10 steps in one direction slowly and really paying attention, really zooming in on what it feels like. Um, but you can do it anytime you walk. And what this helps us do is it, again, get out of the head and into the body. So, you know, you're doing, you know, really kind of um, being more present. There's a link for this, but there's, um, you know, you can do something a little bit more um, vigorous so that you're maybe nourishing, stretching the spine out a little more, as we said before, a little more exercise. The 10 mindful movements, they're all going to be links for all of these by Thich Nhat Hanh. It's a really slow, deliberate, takes about, I think, 14 minutes. But um, there's a video. It's really, really peaceful, really calming. You might want to try that or some gentle yoga. Again, these are all great ways. Or some mindful eating. You know, think about what you do when you eat. And so often, many of us are multitasking. So try to slow down and just savor, enjoy the food. Notice the smells, the textures. Again, just really kind of zooming in, using your sensations, uh, but maybe using some of these tips to really relax yourself. This can be a great time to 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 really, um, even at work. I know we many of us are doing all sorts of things while we're eating, but try even just if you can't for the whole time, maybe a few minutes. And there's a couple of links here. There's a classic mindful raisin eating exercise, um, or if you prefer chocolate, you can try it with chocolate. So try try those two. Those are, those are really quick. So the daily practices, the formal practices, is the body scan and mindful movement. So you could do, if you can do both in one day, that's great, but you might alternate body scan one day, mindful movement the next. Um, gonna send you that article about the body scan meditation but again, this is this is the formal practice for this week. Good comment here. I hear walking barefoot connect you and ground you, connect to the earth's energy. Yeah, exactly. You know, if that helps, that's super. Um, maybe more difficult outside this time of year, but um, um, somebody says, yeah, it does. It's been a huge help. So give that a try. That's a great suggestion. So the informal practice this week, you can continue the what we did last week. I think those are really good to continue with just all those everyday routine tasks, bringing our awareness to those. But also what I'd like you to do is notice pleasant events. When something pleasant or positive happens, what do you what do you notice? What do you what's your response? You know, what's going through your mind? What do you feel in your body? Tune into that. Um, usually we let those slide on by pretty quick. So spend a little time with that and savor it and notice it. And you might even jot down on your log what that was like. Okay. So those are your informal practices. And here are the uh, links. So there's a link to the body scan, a link to the walking meditation. There's the raisin and the eating. Of the, uh, the next one is the chocolate again. There's the ones for the... Um, Thich Nhat Hanh, the spine, are all there. And then um, there's that article, which I'll send. And then also there's a couple of other articles, the video on the attitudes and a couple of optional things if you want to read those. Basically, what those articles are about have a lot to do with what we're really doing is retraining our minds, uh, retraining and actually creating 
new neural pathways, new brain chemistry. So the more we do it, like anything, the more we practice at it, like learning a musical instrument or learning to play tennis or golf or something like that, you know, you're really changing the brain as you do that. You're rewiring the brain. So um, give those all a try. All right. So um, leave you with this quote. Um, by Jack Cornfield, we need to remember that where we are going is here, that any practice is simply a means to open our hearts to what is right in front of us. Where we already are is the path and the goal. So we're really trying to keep it simple with this. So do your best. Um, don't overcomplicate it. Try to discover what works for you. Uh, use some of those attitudes, be friendly to yourself, and um, let me know if you have any questions. I'll send out the slides later, stop the share, and I'll let you go. But um, thank you very much for coming today, and I'll be here for a few more minutes if anybody has any questions. I'm going to stop the recording, but thank you very much for being here.